Hello, this is Brother Cromer again from the Math Department. This is a continuation of uh, distribution of sample means in the Central Limit Theorem. So I'll, I, where I left off from the lat, from part one is the distribution of sample means when the parent population is normally distributed. I was going to go through a couple of examples. So first of all, going through this example, the length of a human pregnancy from conception to birth is normally distributed with a mean of 266 days and a standard deviation of 16 days. So suppose a random sample of 30 pregnancies was measured. What is the mean, standard deviation, and shape of the distribution of mean pregnancies based on a sample of 30? Well, the mean of the means is equal to the mean of the parent population, which is 266. The standard deviation of the sample means is equal to, or the distribution of sample means, is the original standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So it's 16 divided by the square root of 30, which is 2.92. And the shape of this distribution is normal or bell-shaped. Now, you could argue for two ways. One is because the sample size is large. But more than that, the parent population is normally distributed. So by definition, regardless of the sample size, the shape of the distribution of sample means is normal. So let's go through the last example here. So here is, turn that off here, the heart rate for a typical college student is normally distributed with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 16 and a half days. Suppose a random sample of 10 students was measured. What is the mean, standard deviation, and shape of the distribution of mean heart rates for a typical college student based on a sample of 10? So you can stop the video and go through this example. Well, the answer for the mean is equal to 80. So the mean of the means is equal to the population mean, which is 80. The standard deviation of the distribution of sample means is the original standard deviation, 16 and a half, divided by the square of the sample size, which is 10. And the shape of the distribution, because the original the parent population is normal, the distribution of the, uh, the, the distribution of sample means is also going to be normal. Okay. So one last slide I want to mention here is some key points. Okay. The key points are first of all the difference between the central limit theorem and the law of large numbers. So the central limit theorem is the sample size increases and becomes large, the distribution of sample means becomes approximately normal. In contrast, a lot of large numbers is the sample size and increases, so it starts off the same. The sample means uh, the sample mean draws closer to the population. So this is covering accuracy. So you will need to make the distinction between these two definitions throughout the semester. Okay? When is the distribution of sample means normal? Well, there's two ways it could be normal. One, when the parent population is normal. So if the original population, the parent population is normal, and or when the sample size is considered large. Okay? And then finally, the mean of the distribution of sample means equals the mean of the parent population. So this is how it's described symbolically. And then the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means equals the standard deviation of the parent population divided by the square root of the sample size. And that's how this is written up symbolically here, or, math of, or, or, or by formula. And so that concludes the Lesson 6 videos for dealing with distribution of sample means and the central limit theorem. If you have any questions, please talk to your instructor or to one of your colleagues.